Hi, Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning. So today we're going to do some tutorial discussion for chapter 1, focusing on 1.1 reaction rate. So in this video, we're going to look into tutorial question 4, question 5 and question 8 respectively. So for question 4, the conversion of cyclopropene to propene in the gas phase is a first order reaction with a rate constant of 6.7 times 10 to the power of negative 4. And this happened at a temperature of 500 degrees Celsius. So the keyword that you need to know is it is a first order reaction and has a rate constant of 6.7 times 10, 10 to about 94 per second. So this is a rate constant for the first order reaction. And this is the conversion of cyclopropene into propene gas. And you will learn more about this in the organic section later in the, sub, uh, later in the semester two. Okay. Uh, so for question A, if the initial concentration of cyclopropane was 0.25 molar, calculate the concentration after 8.8 .8 minutes. So this is the initial concentration, you can denote it as A0. And this is our, we have to find the concentration A after 8.8 .8 minutes. Okay, the thing that we really need to be um, careful of is the unit of time because the rate constant here is in, in the unit of second per second and this one is in minutes so we have to convert the time into second in order to cancel it out all right so the first thing that we have to do is we know that it is a first order reaction and hence we're going to do the integrated rate law for the first order equation where ln a naught is equal divided by concentration of a equal to kt and we know that it's a first order reaction where A is equal to the concentration of cyclopropane. And first, we have to change the time from 8.8 .8 minutes is equivalent to 528 seconds. So we just need to multiply by 60 seconds. Right? So once we've done that, we're going to substitute all the values that we have, which is ln 0.25, which is the initial concentration, the concentration of A after time t, um, which is the thing that we need to find out. K is given here, which is in the unit per second. And time, we already convert that into second, right? So we just substitute in here. So once we do the math and cancel per second and second, we will get the concentration of cyclopropane going to be 0 0.18 molar. All right? And for me, um, how long will it take for the concentration of cyclopropane to decrease? from 0 0.25 molar to 0 0.15 molar. So we're going to use the same integrator rate law where we know that our initial concentration is 0 0.25 molar and the concentration after time t is 0 0.15 molar. So we need to find how long does it get, how, how long does this reaction take to go from 0 0.25 molar into 0 0.15 molar. All right. And the k is still the same as given here in the question. So we just substitute that in and ln 0 0.25 divided by 0 0.15 equal to 6.7 times 10 to the power of negative 4 per second multiplied by t. Okay. And once we do the maths, we're going to get t is equal to 760 second because our rate constant here is in the unit of second. Also, you can convert that into minutes where you divided it by 60 and you will get that in the unit of minutes. So either one, if you want to stop until here, it is also okay. And for C, how long will it take to convert 74% of the starting material to propane? So the starting material, which is the cyclopropane, will have initially 100%. But now we need to convert 74% of the starting material into propane. So cyclopropane, going to propene um, so what's left afterwards is we have used it we have used up 74 percent so what's left at the starting material is that we only left with 26 percent because 74 percent has been converted into propene so the leftover concentration of the starting material is 26 percent so by knowing that uh, we still have to use the ln A0 over A equal to KT. So our initial, our starting going to be 100. And after time T, our concentration of a starting material or the cyclopropane going to be 
and the k is the, is the same as given in the equation and we have to find t so once we do the math we'll get t is equal to 2010.6 second or you can convert that into minutes which is 33.5 minutes all right let's move on to the next question moving on to the next question uh, where question 5 says that iodine atoms combine to form molecular iodine in the gas phase so this is the equation where i gas plus i gas equal to molecular iodine which is also in the gas phase so the rate constant for the above fraction is 7 times 10 to the power of 9 per molar and per second at 23 degrees celsius so for question a if the initial concentration of iodine is 0 0.086 molar so this one is the initial concentration calculate the concentration after two minutes so time is given here and we need to find the concentration after two minutes but how do we know whether it is a first order second order or a zero order reaction okay so as what you have uh, looked into the video of lecture if you were to look back into the video of 1.1 part 2 you will see that we can know the order of the reaction by looking at the unit of the rate constant so the unit of the rate constant here is per molar and per second and this refers to the second order reaction if it is in the unit of per second means it is a first order if molar per second it is a zero order reaction okay so if you want to, if you want to learn more about this please look back into the previous video and then uh, by knowing that it is a second order reaction we can use the integrated rate law of the equation so we know that 1 over a is equal to 1 over a naught plus kt we need to find a here so we can substitute a naught which is here given k is 7 times 10 to the power of 9 per molar per second and time is in minutes so you have to change the minutes into second where 2 times 60 second you're going to get 120 seconds so let's do that 1 over i which is a is equal to our iodine a naught is given here k is given in the equation and the time here we convert into seconds so that we can cancel out with the unit of per molar and per second here okay so once you do the maths we will get that i after two minutes gonna be 1.19 times 10 to the power of negative 12 molar all right nice one and let us move on to b which is calculate the half-life of iodine atoms if the initial concentration is 0.42 molar so this is our initial concentration which is i not and half-life for the second order reaction gonna be t half is equal to 1 over k i naught so we have the k here which is in the equation and i naught is given so you can just substitute straight away and what will you do what will you get to that is 3.4 times 10 to the power of negative 10 second all right okay moving on to this question which is tutorial question 8 the data listed in the table below were obtained from the following decomposition of reactant A going to product. So we have the data here at time 0, the concentration is 1. After 5 minutes, it's going to be 0 0.63. After 9 minutes, it's going to be 0 0.46 and so on and so forth. Now, for question A, they were asking us by plotting, the, by plotting a graph, show that the reaction is the second order reaction. So, how to prove that it is a second order reaction? So the first thing that you need to do is to come up with the integrated red law for the second order reaction where it is equal to 1 over a equal to 1 over a naught plus kt. So from here you know that it is a linear relationship. So you, this is going to be our y axis. Uh, here k here is going to be our m, t is going to be x and here is going to be c. So it's going to be y m x plus c. So we can, we can plot a graph of y against x, which is the time here. Uh, and if we can get a straight line graph, which equal to k, then we can show that it is a second order reaction. Okay. 
one over a naught equal uh, and the x axis is gonna be time and we can get the, if we can get a straight line graph then it is a refer to a second order reaction because it fulfill the requirement here okay so the first thing that you need to do is you need to um, get the data of one over a naught uh, the time here you can use it directly but one over a naught we can just um, you do the calculation of one over one equal to equal to one and one over 0 0.63 got how many value one over 0 0.46 got how many value so we're going to make a new table where i have calculated that into that one one divided by 0 0.46 is going to get 2.17 so you can try to check it again and make sure it is tally to your understanding so now we're going to plot a graph of 1 over e as the y exists against time as the x exists okay so we're going to focus on this data and this data here okay so once i i do that um, i'm going to get here against here so what you can see here at time 0 my 1 over a is going to be 1 and at the 25 minutes uh, my 1 over a is 4 okay so this basically shows that uh, the plot of 1 over a on the y axis versus uh, here change to versus time on the x axis from the given data give a straight line graph so i can say that it is a second order direction and the gradient gonna give a value of m all right and then uh, you have to plus you have to plot this on the graph paper and to get to the actual value but for me uh, i use the excel uh, but at, at least for your stage and for exam uh, the graph paper will be given and you have to draw this by your own all right and for part B, determine the grade constant K. So we have to find the grade constant K here. So as you know, grade constant K can be determined by uh, calculating the slope or the gradient of the graph. Kecenderungan graph. Okay, so we can take the last point and the, the initial point and the last point, and we can find delta Y and over delta X. Because you know that M is the slope is equal to the change in delta Y and the difference in delta X. So once we do that, uh, 4 minus 1 on the y axis is going to get this one. And x axis is 25 minus 0 for the coordinate. We get, we'll get 25 minus 0 here. So once you do the maths, you will get k is equal to 0 0.12 per molar and per minute. Okay, Be careful of the unit here because you are using per molar and divided by minute. Per molar divided by minute so you get per molar and per minute and for part c you have to determine the half life t half if a naught is equal to one molar so for here you know that the uh, the half life of the second order reaction gonna be t t half equal to one over k a naught so k is already obtained from part b and a naught is equal to 1 so we just substitute that in and once we do the math we will get 8.333 minutes all right i think that's all for this video for tutorial 1.1 see you again some other time thank you and goodbye